Ladies and gentlemen, today I bring you all of the relevant and irrelevant information you could possibly want on this woman shrouded in mystery. We're not talking about Shanks, not about Usopp, but the most dangerous damsel in Cypherpol Aegis. The woman who not many know of, and even less know about. Stussy the spy and... clone? Spoiler warning for those not caught up to One Piece Chapter 1072, you may want to turn around now. If you're a Giga Chad, you may continue on to the video. Since Chapter 860, people have been questioning who exactly this person is, and today we're going to try to understand just that. It wasn't until 210 chapters later, Chapter 1070, where we found one of our biggest clues to date. There are four notorious figures standing shoulder to shoulder here. Queen, Caesar, Vegapunk, Judge, and a mysterious feminine figure, coincidentally facing away from the cameraman, of course. Many fans, including myself, have suspected that this is none other than Stussy of CP0. Well, let's take a look. A tiny bit of research will tell us Stussy stands at a humble 5'10", and her most identifiable style choices would be the fluffy garter belt and her flowing shoulder-length hair. She has this classical fancy vibe in all her outfits that I would say is her trademark. With that being said, we can assume it's her based off of the bomb drop odor revealed at the end of chapter 1072. In case you missed it, Stussy is a clone. Not just any clone, but the very first successful clone created from the Mads crew and based on a rocks pirate. Today we're going to discuss what we know about Stussy up to the present day in the story. Now, like I mentioned before, not much is known of Stussy, but based off of the bits and pieces Oda throws our way, we can gather a general idea of her character. Let's start off with general facts. Stussy hails from the Grand Line, loves apple pie, and has an O blood type. She's seen in every major location after her introduction at Big Mom's Tea Party. As a double agent, she became a notable member in the underworld, and gained a good standing with Big Mom herself. The fact that she's even at that party proves that her double agent skills are on another level. She's damn good at what she does and has the combat ability expected from a Cypher Pool member. Soon after the tea party starts, she showcases her ability to use signature Cypher Pool moves like Geppo and her really cool ranged finger pistol. As a matter of fact, she uses that ability on a man named Dufeld, preventing him from opening the important box that eventually causes Big Mom's chateau to blow up and fall over. Immediately after that shooting, she has the awareness to sense Morgans watching from around the corner and warns him to not speak about what he saw. Her skills fit her occupation and really shouldn't come as a surprise. What does come as a surprise is what she does in chapter 1072, the most recent chapter available. While Kaku is fighting Zoro, we see Stussy sink her teeth into Kaku. When we see her in her full form, she appears to have grown bat-like wings similar to those of a vampire bat. It also seems that she may interact with the blood of a person, which would make the vampire bat connection that much stronger. Post-editing Alex here. While I was scrolling Twitter, I saw a tweet by Geo stating that Stussy may indeed have a succubus type devil fruit. And the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. Stussy is known for being someone who doesn't physically age the same as anyone else. And in the most recent chapters, Stussy was able to sink her teeth into Kaku and use his blood as a type of resource. And the first thought that comes to mind would be perfectly a succubus. Succubi are known for being beautiful creatures that take the life of somebody and use it as their own energy. And it would also be very convenient in her first introduction at Whole Cake Island, what is she seen consuming? The liquid of an animal. And also when she appears next to Dufeld, what does somebody say? That that general area reeks of blood. Okay, they were talking about Dufeld. But still, very, very coincidental, Oda. Speaking of powers, we need to note that Stussy is not a Seraphim. We know that because her wings are shaped differently and her skin complexion is lighter. 
This would also imply that she might be the first successful clone because she can act on her own and has autonomy. Shortly after that reveal, we are told that she was originally Miss Buckingham Stussy of the Rocks Pirates. You know, the legendary crew that had Big Mom and Kaido and, and Whitebeard and Rox. Rox is still facing the emu allegations to this day, which I personally see as canon at this point, or at least my own personal head canon. We'll come back to her most recent reveals later, but for now, that's about it for general information on Miss Buckingham Stussy. The next important part here is seeing her actions since her introduction and what they mean. We'll start with her most notable moments in Whole Cake Island, and then move to Egghead. We're gonna skip past her appearances at the Reverie in Wano, because she doesn't really do much besides show up. Whole Cake Island, it serves as Stussy's entrance to the series, so naturally Oda did his thing and planted some seeds for the payoff later on. The most notable moments come from her unveiling her true character. It almost seems like Stussy has this invisible mask on at all times, but there are a few times where we can see behind it and gather clues on her true self. Like for example when she spoke with the King of the Underworld, and we learn that she's much older than she looks, combined with her being secretive about her age. From a character standpoint, these things build on her mysteriousness, her mystique, and when we see her shoot a man in cold blood later on, she truly seems like a perfect cipher pole intelligence agent. One thing I haven't mentioned yet which might be the biggest shocker is her connection to Morgans and Dufeld, aka the man she shot. Stussy basically forced Morgans to fabricate a story for the world news, showing us that she'll go to any length for the sake of the world government. This also means Stussy can influence a majority of the world purely by altering the only news source in One Piece. And there might be some history between these two, because if you check all throughout this arc, most likely Morgans is always in the vicinity of Stussy. It's a mutually beneficial partnership where Stussy can feed Cypherpole valuable information. Which reminds me of the other piece of information that would connect Stussy to Mads and serve as the biggest insight to her past, of course, before chapter 1072. Dufeld, king of the underworld and largest financial backer of Mads. The scientific research team with Vegapunk that ended up succeeding with the cloning experiments, thus creating our lovely lass. It is no coincidence that Oda had these two enter the arc side by side given their connection to Mads. Whether or not Feld followed the experiments closely and knew exactly what Stussy was, we might never know. But these two are undoubtedly connected through that single thread. If they were indeed connected from the beginning, then her betraying him makes her a cold, cold woman. Overall, we leave Whole Cake Island with just enough information about Stussy's identity to keep us fed. Little did we know, the next time we would get a fresh batch of information was three arcs later, bringing us to our current point in the story, Egghead Island. Egghead Island is kicking off the final saga of One Piece phenomenally. We haven't been in this arc for too long, but it's already packed with game-changing lore. Speaking of game-changing lore, let's go back to Stussy, shall we? Stussy enters the scene along with Kaku, Luchi, and the Kuma Seraphim. As they arrive to Egghead with the mission of eliminating Vegapunk, they have a little conversation about their objective. And for the first time ever, we see Luchi question his orders from the Gorosei, and the one who warns him to stay on track is none other than Stussy. You'll notice the same exact exchange happen a few more times this arc. Luchi will basically hesitate on following orders, and Stussy's the one that steps in to make sure he doesn't fly too close to the sun. It's ironic given how things play out, but we'll get to that soon. After they get to Egghead with the Seraphim, Stussy's able to explain Vegapunk's defenses and technology down to a T, almost as if they had a close past with each other. After that, we get more awesome lore related to an ancient kingdom and how it connects to the Void Sentry, you know, the usual goodness. Luchi and the gang end up getting all the Seraphim on their side, and everything looks to be in favor of the world government. 
That is, before Stussy bites into Kaku, causing him to pass out and leaving Luchi with a face of betrayal. Then on top of that, we see the big bomb drop reveal where we learn that Stussy was the first successful clone ever created by Mads. The scientific wonder that is Miss Buckingham Stussy of the Rocks Pirates stands before us, blood dripping from her mouth staring menacingly at Luchi. Where do I begin? Well, first, I believe her devil fruit is either a zoan of a vampire bat or something along the lines of a succubus. Knowing what we know now about the foreshadowing of her quirks and powers at Whole Cake Island, it would explain a lot. Her senseless aging, her interactions with blood and animals, her bat wings, that would be my best guess. Her history with the Rocks Pirates leads me to believe that she currently has some sort of relationship with Rocks himself. If you're a believer in the Rocks is Eam theory, then this makes more sense. I actually wouldn't be surprised if she was in direct contact with Eam, considering this clone is a perfect copy of his crewmate, who knows him better than anyone else. Oda also introduced Seraphim as creatures who can follow absolute orders and act by themselves in a limited capacity. Whereas with Stussy, she has complete control over her motivations and actions, but the issue right now is finding out why she's doing what she's doing. Is it for her personal sake? Is it for rocks? It most certainly isn't for the benefit of the world government considering she looks absolutely ready to kill Luchi. And as for her connection with Mads, it is most certainly her. But the question is, is it her original version or the Stussy of today? There is one more final factor that matches everything up. Edward, Weevil, and Miss Buckin. If Miss Buckin is indeed Miss Buckingham Stussy, the original, who was also part of the Rocks Pirates, then that also means it is very likely that Whitebeard and Miss Buckin had a son named Weevil, who shares the blonde hair and all of the other similar characteristics. There are no coincidences in the story of One Piece. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Please sub, like, comment, all of that to help with algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time.